GIS in three dimensions. In this section, we'll learn about the basics of three-dimensional visualization in GIS. We'll then get acquainted with ArcScene, the platform in ArcGIS for desktop that allows for three-dimensional visualization. We'll learn how to visualize landscapes and imagery in three dimensions in ArcScene, and also use ArcScene to create a three-dimensional demographic data visualization. Vertical Datums and 3D Coordinate Systems In this video, we'll get introduced to GIS in three dimensions. We'll also learn about 3D coordinate systems and vertical datums. In a GIS, we're tasked with trying to model and understand processes that occur on the Earth's surface, whether human or physical. In many cases, we're constrained by our flat computer screen and a basic two-dimensional model of the Earth whether it be using a geographic or projected coordinate system. That said, however, the Earth often exists in three dimensions, in which you have features that have height or elevation or some sort of texture that you'll want to model. You can certainly address this with surface analysis or landscape modeling using a raster data model, but in some cases it can be useful to actually model that texture directly inside of your GIS. In turn, ArcGIS has significant functionality for working with data in three dimensions. For example, we can look at this sample image of a digital elevation model in which elevations are represented graphically, and you can see the actual topography of the landscape. To model data in three dimensions, we need some sort of description of a z-coordinate. Z-coordinates in GIS are commonly used to encode elevation or some other attribute of interest in our data set. Elevation makes sense, certainly, if we're thinking about modeling a landscape, but as we'll see in a video later in this series, you can use a z-coordinate to represent data, such as building height data or even demographic data, showing some additional dimensions of your data set. When we're working with elevation data in particular and making vertical measurements, we need some sort of reference surface against which we can make those measurements. This reference surface is referred to as a vertical datum. In GIS, we work commonly with horizontal datums, which are horizontal reference surfaces that allow us to make X and Y positional measurements. For Z coordinates, the reference surface is a little bit different. A couple common vertical datums that we use include the geoid, which is represented in the image, which is the equipotential surface of the Earth. That is, the surface at which the pull of gravity is constant. We might also use mean sea level for making vertical measurements. In turn, this allows us to encode and then represent the topography of a landscape, which in turn facilitates 3D modeling. 